I got all the selvage done, I want to do around the perimeter of the uh, of the hull down there. Get your hand out of the way, one down in here, so I can get that ready for uh, filleting. So that'll be the next thing. Let me go ahead and vacuum everything down. We'll come back and uh, start doing some filleting. Yeah, let's start on on this part. I've got some of it already done, but. Squeeze it out, and I was earlier when I was doing some of the other ones, I was squeezing out too much and I was creating, creating, creating too many uh, windrows. Just stick out a little bit, pull it into shape. I find too that if you twist it a little bit, you'll get some of the stuff that builds up on the edges to come off. Down in here. Not enough. Get in there. If it looks good at the time, <laughs> leave it. Leave it be. Uh, see what I said? Leave it be. What did I do? Go scratch it. Okay, that's good enough for there. You've seen this before in all my other council videos, so uh, we'll call this enough. One of the things you want to do is go around with your you know, a big scraper in a cloth and just just look for places that, you know, there may have been a, a little boo-boo. Just kind of smooth it in. The biggest thing is you're going to try to go around and scrape up little spots that may have came up around here. Uh, unless it's really big, uh, don't mess with it because you'll probably mess up the fillet. So, uh, we've got that done. Uh, my hatches uh, are coming in and uh, we'll be able to mount those and basically I'm all I have to do now is just let the fillets cure tonight tomorrow we'll come out and sand sand the surfaces down and I'll probably sand the surface of the inside of the hull and uh, get everything ready for a primer and then uh, we'll paint it uh, depending on whether the hatches come in first. I like to drill the holes for the hatches first uh, and then uh, then paint them so, or then paint underneath of them. So, But it can work either way. You can have it, uh, you know, the whole thing painted and then just line up your hatches and uh, drill the holes. And, and then um, if it's already painted and, and the paint's dry, then you can go ahead and put your uh, sealant around the hatch at the same time. So. Uh, so I guess that's it. It's coffee break time. Well, got the sanding all finished up now. I used my little Milwaukee uh, multi-tool around the edges. This thing works slicker than hell. And there's a fine makes a an attachment for theirs that holds uh, uh, little pieces of profiles in it. I've got this Porter cable thing. Luckily, I, I bought it cheap. I've been really kicking myself in the butt if I would have paid a lot of money for this thing. It's too big, and it just just doesn't work. Probably made in America a piece of crap. So I'm going to get the uh, extra little tool for this guy, and uh, I'll show you that probably on the next boat I build when I start work on the, uh, the Sol Duck drift boat. So uh, 
I'm going to show you something. Uh, I'm going to cut away now to uh, another two videos of what I did before I put the fillets down here because um, I had some big gaps down here uh, on on this side of the of the uh, rear seat forward panel, and I did something. Well, we'll see it. It comes up next. I didn't know how this would go. I, this one was over on, on this side of the hull, and it came out fine. Now I can pull out ah, the one on the other side. So this works. So I'll have to have Bob, my friend Bob Ellis up in Anchorage, do this for a, have you seen this thing? Uh, this works. A plastic rope to um, back up something when you're doing the fillets. Okay, that should be enough of that. I've got the hatch centered up on my, uh, I've got a remnant of a center line here, so I'll use that. And I got the blue tape here just to mark up for, for later reference, so now that I got it in, I'll. Power, huh? Okay. Set the bottom one. I like to uh, have these guys in here. This is that little tip that you pull back this guy and the drill bit comes out. Okay. And we got them drilled. And you'll see that this <laughs> hole is bigger than what I should have been. So I should have measured it better. But I used some um, cardboard around the edge to uh, even it up. So I'm, by the time I get done putting the adhesives on, I'm going to try something else too. I'm going to use uh, System 3 as something new. I'm going to try uh, their SA2100. Uh, it's like 5200, but uh, once you open up the tube, you can uh, use it a year from now. So that should do it. Uh, probably up next, and let me reset up. As you can see, I've got the hull painted well, actually, the primer. I got the first coat of primer on. Uh, I was kind of wondering, I hadn't used this, and I'm using uh, Rust-Oleum's Ultra Coat Primer. Um, it's really thick. <laughs> I tell you, it, uh, it goes on pretty thick. Um, you can get a pretty good coat from brushing, but I rolled it out. But I'll use my brush down in the, the seams here. And one of the things that I want to let you know when you're using these paints is to try to find some test area. Now this hole, was it this hole? No, it was one of my other holes, the, the, the 10 foot nut hatch. First time I painted it, the, uh, the paint didn't uh, take. Uh, I was using the wrong, it was an alkali. So I called up, actually called up um, Rust-Oleum's 1-800 number and talked to one of their customer representatives to see if this would work on epoxy. And she kind of panicked a little bit, and then I said, uh, you know, she'd go check. And so I was hanging on the line for, I don't know, maybe a minute. And she came back and said, yeah, it would work fine. Just make certain that it was uh, roughed up well. So I think a lot of the, uh, the problems with some of these uh, paints not sticking is that uh, some of the less expensive ones that have the anime blush, anamine blush or anime blush, uh, kind of like stuff you have to wipe off rinse off with uh, water and a sponge and dry. Um, doesn't happen with the System 3 silver tip. It's uh, anime free, so uh, you don't have that blush to have to worry about getting rid of. But, go around in the seams right here on these uh, uh, fillets we have and anywhere where there's glass tape and it, it, anywhere where it's, it's a smooth, smooth finish. Uh, that's where uh, you'll wind up in problems where you don't get a good sand and um, down in some of the spots. 
and I'll have to be the first one to admit I'm a terrible sander uh, or finish up kind of guy and I'm a terrible, I hate painting. Um, so I, you know, that's why I probably have, you know, it looks good at 10 feet, you know, it's good enough for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's a boat and it floats and as long as you go out and have fun with it. So I'm going to, now I got the, I'm, I just, I had the one coat of primer on. And one thing that uh, I always like about these, like, the light gray colors is that every, all the little airs show up, especially when I'm doing the outside. Uh, that last weave fill, I usually like to mix a little bit of white, a little bit of white pigment paste into the part A, and just a hint of part of uh, the black pigment paste. Just enough, no, not so much black. Just like I said, a hint of black in order to get a um, the last weave fill coat a light gray color. So then, when you put that on with your scraper. Uh, all of those little things will jump right out at you. Uh, bear, uh, the um, plain epoxy on uh, on the wet out, where you just have the wood in the background, you, you can't see anything. It's when you put on some opaque surface on top of that that the little bumps and divots and voids and all that kind of stuff jump out at you. So enough of this. I'm going to go ahead and paint this off camera. It means you know. I have the first coat of uh, paint on, and I brushed it on, and it's a f it looks shiny now, but it's actually a flat white. Uh, I wanted to uh, use a brush just to get into the corners and uh, up around the edges, and uh, I find this easier on little pock marks and stuff to use the brush to uh, fill them in, especially. Uh, uh, after the, um, the primer, there's still a little bit of surface uh, blemishing that it's easier to fill with a brush. So I'll let that um, set up, and uh, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put my build my tent now and put my heater in to uh, help it because it's not that warm in the shop now. So we'll come back when I get that done. First thing I start out with on my, my tenting is I have these Bogan, uh, they call them C-stands, Century Stands. From my video days, and then I got an old whitewater kayak paddle suspended across, and I got my little heater uh, hanging on a cord in here. So let me go ahead and finish it up. Got my tent on, heater's hooked up, it's secure. I've done this before, so I've, I, I, I'm not too uh, worried about it. It only comes on for maybe 30 seconds once every 10 minutes. I mean, it's hardly uh, uh, when I check my electric. Uh, meter in the mornings, uh, I can't really tell much difference between this when it's on and when it's not on, So, but it gives a, a lot of help. So I've been toying with the idea of maybe putting some uh, propane heater in here to help uh, make it a little more comfortable in the wintertime because i got a couple of boats I'm uh, thinking about building next. The uh, As you can see, I've got the hull painted and it's all dry now and I've been really I'm really tickled pink with this uh, Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover, the, uh, the primer and the, uh, the paint. I got flat white. Uh, I wish I could have got, normally I paint my interior of my holes uh, a light, real light gray, because I find on bright days it's much easier on the eyes not having that reflection. Uh, but the flat white should probably do the trick too, even though it's going to be probably brighter than I would like. But they didn't make a light gray. But uh, it's, I'm pretty happy with that stuff. Uh, we're going to put the hatches in. And I'm uh, going to try something new here. System 3 has uh, a new product, uh, SA2100. We'll get a close-up of it here in a minute. It's an epoxy. It's kind of like uh, 5200 and Stickflex. Only uh, this is a two-part epoxy, so this tube will remain usable for years to come. So here's the, uh, the tube again. I'll turn around so you can see it. SA2100 uses the Utah tube and the mixing nozzle. And here are some little samples that I'd made up. and just squeezing some out. And it's kind of rubbery. And then here's another little... It's almost make a gasket if you put it between plastic, which this, which this was. It was the bottom of one of my uh, little... Uh, my little mixing cups here and a piece of plastic and uh, you know you can see how flexible it is and then this one was a bead that I pushed in between some black visqueen so 
it, you know, it's pretty tough stuff. So let's get on with it. I'm going to make a bead around the just on the inside the hatch. I, a lot of times I'll do this on the wood, but I'm going to follow these beads here because I think I might be able to just lay the uh, the nozzle in one of these grooves on the back side of this uh, sea dog hatch. And this is an eight inch one, so I'm going to probably put three beads around it, one in line with the holes, one outside and one inside. So. And I can just lay the end of the tube down in this one groove. And just follow it around and I can go back to the middle here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this off camera. I've got the uh, tube of 2100 put away again, so like I said before, unlike Stickaflex and uh, 5200, uh, the 2100 here will uh, I'll be able to use it a year from now. The only thing I have left is uh, I got to re-drill uh, the holes for my mass partner because when I did the, redid the seat, it moved it back a little bit, and I have to uh, chop the top of the uh, the cup at the base down about oh three eighths of an inch in order for it to clear the bottom of the front hatch, which I didn't have before. So uh, this will pretty much you know be the end of this inside. I'll probably uh, well I will make a video of. Uh, going out to the lake and uh, and rowing around with this boat. Uh, I don't have any, f no absolutely no video of this boat other than this building part and also the, uh, the very few pictures of when I was constructing this. Uh, so we'll uh, meet again on the lake and I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, it was about a month ago maybe now, I, I keep forgetting to mention it, but I went over the 800,000 mark and we're about 822,000 now and, and gaining. So a uh, million is not, maybe next spring, early summer. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we'll have something special uh, for that 1 million uh, YouTube mark. So, uh, and the other thing I had mentioned too was uh, before when I was talking about the sails for this, it uses a sprit sail. I kept referring to it you know, it was the gaff rig, it's a gaff rig, but I kept saying it was a, a spirit rig, and it's not a spirit rig, it's a sprit rig. And the way to remember that is R before I. In the water.